Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the viewers at home on Channel 22 in Hampton and the folks here this evening for Tuesday night, November 19th, 2019 for the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee initial meetings for the budget review for this year. I'd like Mike Pluff to lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Start with the introduction of members, starting to my far left and at home on TV, your far right. Stephen LeBranch. Joyce Scapertis. Rusty Bridal, Selectman Truck. Steve Henderson. Brian Warburton, Chairman. Mike Pluff. Bob Ladd, Village District Rep. David Morris. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Kravitz is excused for this evening, as is uh, Judy Bridal Russell, who had a, a school board meeting to review their budget, which we'll be hearing uh, in a couple of weeks. A few um, housekeeping measures before we start off with our police and fire budgets tonight. Um, since Barbara's going to be doing the review of this meeting on tape, make sure we all are talking into the microphone and being very clear so that she understands, and I'll do the same with motions. Also, a few ground rules. Um, Chief Sawyer in a minute will open up with the police department. As is customary, we'll take each section. Our selectmen's rep will make a motion to uh, move that number, seconded by our vice chair, and then our chief and deputy chief will see if there's any questions on each section, if that sounds good to you, Chief so Welcome at home, Chief Richard Sawyer and Deputy Chief David Hobbs tonight. Thank you. And I did watch the uh, presentation. Great job at the selectmen's. So, yeah, let's do that. And if you have questions, please raise your hand through the chair so that we can have some sort of uh, semblance. And so we'll start off. Remember, along with the police budget tonight, we also have animal control parking lot administration as well, right, Chief? And emergency management. Emergency management as well. So I'll turn it at this time, and uh, before I do, I'm sorry, I want to thank Christy Pullum for all the great work she did putting us and uh, putting this together for us and continuously sending us financial reports as well as town manager Welch, uh, who really put these dates in motion, and I can't thank him enough because it really is going to work out well. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to the Chief Sawyer and the Police Department. If you want to just do an opening statement, Chief, and then... Moving forward with this year's budget, uh, we are we're very aware of what we've seen from the voters the last couple of years, defaults, and trying to just have that wider view than just your department. We spent a lot of money in the town, um, school projects and all that. So moving forward, working with the manager's office, uh, we tried to come in as close to a default number as we could. Uh, and that was our motivation moving forward with the development of the budget for, this, uh, for 2020. Yeah, terrific. And you'll see uh, uh, on, the, on the chief's budget for the police department, uh, the, the total bottom line recommended by Selectman was 4560707 But if I could ask Selectman Bridal to uh, move under uh, the subtotal of administration, the first number on the Board of Selectman column. The Board of Selectmen is uh, 637404. Moved by Mr. Bridal. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. I would also have all of you remember to open to your, have your summary page as well because there were some changes because under administration, if you look, the total amount changed to 654, 354, and uh, we can amend that too. But um, any questions, um, please raise your hand for the first part. Under administration, for the Hampton Police Department. Anybody have any comments on that? All right, we'll come back to that. Um, final review if we need to change anything. Okay, uh, uh, Rusty, can we have you move the subtotal sub of crime control and investigations? Okay. So, yeah, subtotal is 703960. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. And that's on page 35 going over to page 36 and a little difference there too uh, just so that you all know in that area we see a lot of the um, uh, you know the areas that we normally see in the budget uh, including the uh, uh, detective sergeants the uh, court wages overtime career incentives pretty much the same straightforward every year in this section does anybody have any questions mr. Marr Yes, I have a question in reference to, <clears throat> for example, the one before, there was 
637. But when you look at the actual is at 930 along with this one, the actual at 441. <coughs> That's for 19. It seems like it's going to be a, a kind of a large jump when you get to 703. It wasn't as well the same thing, but uh, it was very bad. It was very similar in a positive way on the 29th of the budget. Well, if I could help you on that, David. Yeah. So when you look at the summary pages um, that Christy gave us a week or so ago, it said 9-30-19. We have received the October financials since then, so we're actually through October 31st. Right. So well, you would mention this. My question, it should be the same thing. It's like one quarter is left. And how do you get six percent? Sorry. Can't hear you. If you took, a, if, if you're three quarters through the year, you got one quarter left. And if you took one quarter left of what was spent already, yep. I don't see how you get to 637. I'm, I'm not understanding something I'm seeing. The 637 for the proposed 2020 budget. Uh, correct. Well, it, look at also for the, the budget for uh, the actual is 371. And now you're looking at the proposed for the next year at 637 is correct. Well, the actual was out till September 30th. Right. 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 I'm talking, that's three quarters of a year. Okay. Right? Yep. So you got one quarter left. Correct. Correct. So if I take a third of that money of the, which was spent, a third of 371, I, I haven't done the math yet on it. It's, it seems, it appears to be high. Er, and I'm just, first I want to validate that. That's the question. So, the actual, I assume they do, well, people as they go along, they're spending equal amount of money normally each month. The actual, in which section were you talking about both administration and, and crime control? Uh, the administration and, and the control. So, part. and the chief will, I might ask the chief to add to this, but uh, it's right on where it should be because the end of October they have expended 67% of that budget. Right. With 208 of, of the administration line. So they're pretty much on target, right? Chief, I would say one thing uh, to Mr. Morrow's point. When you look at administration, yeah. administration will usually be month to month closer to the target number than other areas of the budget. And here's why. We're the administration. We work what we work. We don't come in and, you know, we're not getting overtime. We're not working all these other things. When you get to the folks that are working out on the street and doing that, it ebbs and flows. Like when our special officers come in, you know, right now it's kind of a dead time of the year for us, so you won't see a lot of expenditure in that line item for this last quarter. But when we get to June through October, or April through October, you'll see it peaking. So we don't run equal month to month. Right? The one that probably comes the closest to that is administration. There's not a lot of ebb and flow in the administration budget. Well, I'm using the, the, the actuals of 930 for this. I know you've said they've been updated to the end of October. But we're right on target, I believe. You are right on yeah. target, Chief. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it, just to give you an example, um, in comparison to the other years, they're always hover around the 67, 68 yeah. percent through October 31st. Yeah. So they're going to be right on uh, by the end of December 31st. So remember, this is January 1 through October 31st. I understand that. Okay. And I understand it's also from October, from, you know, January 1 through 9.30, which is three quarters of the year. If I take the other, but take one third of that, do I get? Continue on. I'll give it another shot. Yeah, just, just so that you know, and Chief, thank you, because I, uh, David, if this could help, I actually went through the total of the police department through October 31st, and they are at 77%, just under, through October 31st. So, I mean, we're, we're really close to what's going to happen, so. And also, if you look at it, you know, the uni uh, holiday pay and career incentives yeah, that's don't right. get paid. Yeah. yeah, that's always one that throws that's people right. for a loop sometimes. Yep. Why, why do we still have 100% left in that item? That's we don't yep. pay it until the first pay period that's in December. That's a big one, because December. that's what's saying here. December. It's not equal to you get to December, yeah. then you get right. to, then then you you got got like a, you got two a big Decembers. Job. Right. Got a big I'm, I'm exaggerating, but. Yeah. Right? That's a contractual obligation that they have I, to fulfill. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I'm just trying to understand the numbers. Yeah. 
And I think in our book, the 371 is only 60%. It's not actually 75%. Well, it's it's three months. It's well, that's seventy five percent of time from January one to the end of September thirtieth is nine months. Understood. So that's seventy five percent. But, but I think they're only sixty six spent. I think is the difference. Like you're saying that it's a quarter, which I totally agree with. But I think they're only sixty six percent spent, even though we're expecting them to be seventy five percent spent. If you. Remember what we've said all along. We have the book that Christie's given us, but we get updated numbers. I understand so, that. I'm looking at this page only. I That's understand what I'm discussing. That. Okay. I'm not discussing updated Okay, October. so are we, are we all set on, are we up to date now? I'm fine. Okay, thank you. Remember, let's raise our hand if you want to uh, ask questions. Uh, Mr. Bridal, you? No, I was just going to say, in the perfect world, every month is 112. There you go. So, yeah. but when you have summer seasons and stuff like that we don't we can't do that as a perfect wheel so that's why a lot is more sometimes it's spent more in the summer and other things yeah. come up like well with this is spent this is after the summer it's not it's the end of yeah. but there's still other things that come and yeah. come and go that come at different times of the year it's so funny that rusty knows that when i ran state parks we'd spend 88 percent of our budget in 12 weeks i mean that's so i mean we other times of the year was easy so we would have you know Good, so we all set on that section. The uh, next section is traffic control and report. Mr. Bridal? Traffic control report, bottom line is uh, 2,151,218. Thank you. Do I have a second by Mr. Pluff? Any discussion in the area of uh, traffic control and patrol? Okay, hearing none, uh, we go into the uh, training area. That figure is uh, 56,425. Yeah. By Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any discussion in this area? All right. All right, support services. Support services is. Uh, 805-495. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Puff, 805-495. <coughs> Subtotal support services. Anybody have any questions or comments in that area? Mr. Henderson. A couple quick questions. Yep. I know this year it was uh, rainy, lousy spring, so we didn't bring a lot of guys in from the outside. Mm -hmm. What is the average we pay when we do pay the bring the guys in from outside, the high and the low? Brian, did we get that to you? That was last year's information. We I don't think a lot has changed because oh, okay. the primary units we use is UNH and Epic. And I think those numbers remain Pretty consistent much the same. on their detail rates. Um, and the other problem was is just it's like everybody else, trying to get people to come to work. We would put, you know, first thing I want to make sure we're clear on is any work that I send to an outside agency went through the HPA members first, Correct. which was refused. Thank you. So when that happens and we have a need because of an event or because of the weather and we can't get the support uh, from the state police, mm -hmm. then we go to that option. But i got to be honest, it was very hard to get people even through that program this year. It's getting tougher around uh, with recruitment and, re and retention. Um, so cool weather... Two things contributed to that number being low this year. We did have a very wet spring, the preseason, and that's what that was really designed for. Pre-4th of July, there was times before we get our new officers out there, and it was wet and cold, so we didn't have much of a preseason. Um, and the other thing is just the other agencies that we do utilize, it's getting harder for them to get people to take the extra work, just like it is for us. So, uh, so my, my question is, though, what is the salary that we're paying? You know, what is the high and the low? What we're paying to these guys when they come in from outside? So the public knows what we're paying. Epping is a straight rate of, I want to say, $42 an hour, and UNH is $42, uh, $44 an hour. So whoever you get from UNH, whoever you get, you get from Epping, it's the same rate of pay. Yeah. Which is Plus that? whatever their uh, administrative fee is. Administrative. That's a contractual issue, I, probably, on their side. Right? On both the parts. They don't get Hamptons. They get theirs. Yeah, both have con uh, labor contracts that, that we have to abide by. And I know it's been a problem, too, but um, how are we making out as far as getting state police back in and working in Hampton? Because I know, you know, they, there's been some issues with their budgets, et cetera. But as, as we've spoken before, and I've brought this up before, 
hey, it's state property, it's state beach, you know? So, you know, we should get some help from the state and we should probably get more than we've uh, been getting the last couple of years anyways. I can't know? disagree with you that we should be getting more. Here's the problem, it's, it's the same problem everybody's having is finding A, people to fill the vacancies and the workforce has changed. No, and I will say this, the, the people we hire and the people I see coming into this field should be applauded for coming into this field in such a challenging time. But just like the private sector, they want to work 40 hours and they're not really that interested in working the extra. So while we're trying to get our folks to work the extra and they're refusing it, it's hard for me to press hard on the colonel to press his people to come in and do work that we've already refused. That's the problem is we're all chasing the same issue with our people. It's people that want to come to this job and the fact that the workforce in general today they want to work fewer hours. So that, that is really what we're up against. The Colonel is very supportive. He actually appeared here at a selectman meeting one night uh, with the State Park. But also remember, we're subject to that 1933 agreement that the town of Hampton is responsible for public safety at the beach. So they give us what they can give us. Uh, we actually just left the State Park meeting. Uh, one of the things we did get uh, out of the State Parks people is they did send us a couple of the, the forest rangers to help us on the North Shore with the fireworks issue. So we're hoping we can try to expand that a little bit. Um, I was inquired about maybe the Sheriff's Department some more. Problem with the Sheriff's Department, he has a limited budget, same problems we are. And the other thing with all the changes with the bail reform and felonies first, uh, that they've actually had to take deputies and put them on that uh, fugitive task force to try to recover some of these people because people are defaulting court at a rate that's uh, alarming. So the ability to get anybody from the Sheriff's Department beyond what we've been getting or the state police uh, is minimal. I'll certainly continue to press for it, but I don't want to give promises that I can't keep that uh, it's going to change much in the near future. So. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Chief, I just had a question. Yep. So at the end of October, currently, you've expended in that outside agency a little over 16000 So if that remains the same, does the rest of that money go back into the... Like if there's money left over, where does that go? Um, that would be a question to ask the finance director. Yeah. Um, if like it ends. Unexpended funds from a particular line? Not from a particular line, bottom line only. Bottom line. That's what I meant, bottom line. Okay, so oh, yeah. it goes so back the into the. Bottom line will go into the other kind of fund balance, right. yes. Right. But you, you don't think maybe some of those, I'm, my term is the bills maybe haven't come in yet? or? No, usually I, I want those bills. The last one that worked under that I think was probably the first or second week of August. Okay. And most of the only, you know, there's one department I constantly have to harp on because they take about a month to get the, the billing done, which I would expect they would want their money quicker, but it takes about a month. <laughs> but no, I believe all the bills are in okay, for, for that program. If I, I'll double check, but I don't believe we have any It's a tough bills. one, like you said. Yeah. I, you just never know, right? I mean, yeah. There's somebody, somebody could hit us with one that they forgot, but I don't anticipate it. Thank you. Okay, under special details. And that, everybody understand what that is, right? We don't need... We, we need to move that, Rusty? I don't think we need to do anything with that. Do you? you have to move it. Is it zero? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, special zero, details zero. Is zero, zero. <laughs> Good. And then the last uh, area, and I think we saw a little increase here, the police stations and buildings. It's hard to believe, Chief. It's uh, 15 years. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we were, we were hoping this year um, that to cry, try to come in with some funding to try to start replacing things like carpets, yep. um, furniture, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna make do with what we got for now. It's not it's not critical. It's just getting towards that time where the formica in the offices room on the counter, the offices work in the workstations. Yep. Is starting to peel up. So those are things we want to try to take care of over the next couple of years. Okay. Mr. Bridal, would you like to move that? Yeah, I'll move the 206-205. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff, the number 206-205 for police station and buildings. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this this section? Uh, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, just brief. I, uh, you know, like everything, 15 years the station. You know, like he's talking about the Formica and stuff. That was falling apart, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. So it is time that, uh, you know, like everything, you build a house, stuff starts falling apart, you got to keep it up. So at we've some point, talked, they do have to. We've have to talked about care. doing that through possibly an aggregate and do it through capital improvement, but we have to have further discussions on that and approach that. That's great. Any. Uh, David or, or Mr. Ladd, any other questions? So uh, we're looking good here. Um, question for Christy. So the actual number that Mr. Bridal moved 
Well, let's have Mr. Brado move the I'll final. Move the, the, <laughs> I'll move the, uh, the the total police department is four million five sixty seven oh seven. Seven oh seven, seconded by Mr. Pluff. And I did notice in the summary pages, almost alluded to what I think uh, David was talking about earlier, but the total actually has increased four million five seventy eight nine five three. Um, should we wait, Christy, to final review to do that number, or should we do it now and you can add it into the? That's your guys's choice, whatever. You do. What does the committee wishes? Uh, do we see any changes in this area? Would you rather move this uh, the full number now? Or would you like to wait to the final review? Final review. Final review. Wait. Good. Okay. So, great job, Chief and Deputy Chief, on the uh, the Hampton Police Department budget. Let's, and by the way, December 17th is final review. So if you have any questions, whether there are any changes, we come to that meeting when we make our final numbers available to uh, We want to go to animal control, what, Chief? That would be good. Yeah. Right. We used to be able to just call that the repeat because it was Pete McKinnon. It was pretty much the same. Yeah, I was um, going to say, that's pretty That's pretty much stayed the same. Mr. Bridal, do you want to move? Uh, I will move uh, sub subtotal for animal control is 53,000. 669. Seconded by Mr. Pluff, and you all see that pretty much the majority of that is the salary of Mr. Parmesano, who has done a great job since he's come on. And this budget pretty much stays the same from what I can see every year, Chief. Uh, yeah, uh, we were, we're probably going to come back to you next year just to put it on your radar uh, about a vehicle. Uh, the van really isn't that. working out the way we wanted it to. Yep. We're going to keep the van, buy an insert for it, turn that into a transport vehicle and go back to a pickup truck and put a plow on it because obviously with the snow operations it's you know critical that we keep the place open and just trying to help with that so but that's for next year we'll, we'll wait till 21 on that one oh very responsive i had a an unusual thing in my yard i had an owl last the owl king he caught, he's caught more owls than any human uh, i'll tell you <laughs> and it was unbelievable it was, oh, i've never seen an owl well i <laughs> what were you gonna say I, it was an owl i'm telling you that's what it was but anyway it was good it worked out well well, anybody have any questions? Uh, anybody have any questions or uh, comments on this section? Thank you. All right, the parking administrator. So, uh, Mr. Brado has already moved fifty-three thousand six sixty-nine. We'll hold on to that to final review and parking administration, Chief. Yeah, what uh, this reflects is a change. We're going to be operating our enforcement officers, the guys that are out up on the North Shore and other parts of town, writing parking tickets. That's all now combined with the parking lot simply because when we have, we're trying to utilize those parking lots uh, and generate the most revenue. We had a pretty good year despite the, the slow start because of the number of shows we were able to cover. And having those people working out of the same budget just makes sense to me where it's parking and they're working, some are working enforcement and, so, and also in the booths for us. So it just made sense to combine them. Oh, uh, great. Uh, any other, anybody have any questions on the parking administration? Let me move that number. Go ahead. I'll move the number of 124,173. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any further comments or, or questions on that area? Okay, I think we're good. And then the one final area, the emergency management. You'll recall uh, last year in 2019, uh, we had thousand dollars as we moved forward though we progressed the 12,464 is a number that represents the reimbursement we get from home, state homeland security for right. our participation in the radiological programs and the drills right it goes um, as an expenditure and comes back through the revenue it comes yeah. back to the revenue now that's that was a great discussion I watched that too any comments uh, questions on that area I, go ahead mr. Ladd. <coughs> It seems to me that we have several issues that have come up over the last 18 months. From August to August, we had a threat of a hurricane, we had Legionnaire's disease, and we had a water bin. Uh, do you have any ideas, on, particularly on the water bin, where it's very difficult to communicate to the people at the beach, don't drink the water, they're not from here, they don't live here. Is there any thought being given to improving the way we notify these people? We, when we watched what happened with that and going back to the Legionnaires event, a number of things have, have taken place since uh, the water issue. Um, one of the discussions was utilizing a reverse 911 system. Uh, we're going to a system called Code Red. 
We're doing that through New Hampshire Homeland Security that will give uh, a number of people in town government um, access to this system for emergencies, but also for town notifications for things that aren't emergencies. Okay, the responsibility in the water event is Aquarians, but trying to be a proactive community and letting, letting particularly with the people that show up here, you know, in mass, trying to get the word out, we have to participate somehow with that. So that's an enhancement we're looking to get online, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, we've started our initial steps. I actually have the cards. We just have to do an online course. Everybody that has access to the system has to take this online course. Uh, there's a handful in the police, the fire, and in the town office. Uh, so we're going to have, hopefully have that up and running by the end of the year. The other issue that we're talking about, I don't know if you saw the uh, selectman's meeting last night, our variable message boards have yes. served us well, but they're in pretty rough shape right now. It, it's a hit or miss whether they're going to work for more than a day. Uh, the board has approved the purchase of, what was it, four front? Four. Four new variable message boards that will be programmable from a desktop, which means we don't have to physically go out, open up the box and do it, which will save it. So if we want a universal message in our boards in different locations of town, such as the boil water order, we can have that up in, in a couple of minutes compared to just having to drive around and set these things up. Uh, the other recommendation I've made, it's going to cost some money, it might be a capital improvement program, is having fixed message boards, similar to the one you see out here at the Academy, in specific locations like the front of the town office, um, the entry into the beach coming down 101, uh, coming over the beach on one, uh, over the bridge on 1A, and a couple other locations uh, where we can kind of get a majority of the people that are coming into this community, if there's a message like a boil water order, would get it through that means. Um, there are limitations, though, with what we can do because so many people today are on these. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in order for something like code red to work up, you would have to uh, call in, sign up, give us the numbers and the emails you want to get those on, and those would be plugged into the system. But to get into a, somebody that's you know up traveling from the, from Massachusetts or wherever they're coming from and visiting to get a message out to them, that would take uh, something beyond our capacity in this community. That would take if we had a disaster or something going on when we needed to evacuate the beach, we had a radiological event on a warm, sunny day, that's going to take New Hampshire Homeland Security through their abilities to get into the, the systems where they can put out a message wide broadcast. But we couldn't do that uh, here. Could you consider just flying airplanes with banners <laughs> over the beach as a kind of 19th century temporary solution? <laughs> there are thousands of people on that beach mm -hmm. who are totally unaware of what's going yeah. on, but theoretically are at risk. Um, I would think that probably the way I would address something like that is one of the variable message boards will probably spend a lot of time up by the flower pots um, towards the Ashworth because when we set that one up that can be seen by a lot of people. Yeah. The state also re uh, just left the park meeting. They've also recently purchased a variable message board for their lots that you know we will coordinate messaging with them if we had something like that that we had to put out. Yeah. One final broad base question. Are we at the point where we could benefit from an emergency management committee with you as its director? I think if people want to have a discussion about emergency management, I'm open to sitting down with people just like we do when we have the, the issues of the North Shore. I'll call a community meeting if people, if there's enough people interested or concerned about it, I'll sit down and talk with them and I, I do like listening to other people's ideas on it. It's just statutorial. You have to understand that the statute requires a director. There is no language uh, describing a committee. That's not to say we can't have one. Uh, the Board of Selectmen could uh, impanel a committee to assist me or just to vet ideas or look for things. Um, I'll tell you, the biggest area with emergency management in this town that we're dealing with uh, lately is the flooding issues and people wanting availability to grants when they have these repetitive property losses, how can we help them address those costs? Because it, it's, it's tough working between FEMA, the state entity, and the local trying to get that done. And isn't that a pretty good argument for expanding the support to you? You're now being tasked with things that really were never considered police tasking work issues years ago. 
writing FEMA grants, uh, getting involved with raising properties? Well, we're very fortunate that one of the groups that's been helping us with that is the uh, Rockingham Planning. Uh, yeah. com uh, is it commission or commission? Commission. commission. Yeah. Um, they're very proactive in helping with those things. We've been meeting with them on a, on a regular basis, trying to move forward as to giving our residents the best opportunity to recoup their loss through the proper granting programs. I don't know if a committee of our own would be as effective as the Rockingham Planning because they're looking, when you deal with an entity like FEMA or you know the NRC when we're dealing with issues with the plant, they don't, they look at a bigger view than we do, okay? They want to see that we have a plan that we're going to follow, you know, those keynote things when we're supposed to start making movements, continuity of government issues. That's what they're looking at. And to be successful with the grants, I think you, ha you have to have somebody that's kind of used to dealing at that level. So I don't know if we a committee would be the way to go. I mean, yeah, a grant writer would be great, but if we're getting it from the Rockingham Planning Commission and it's somebody that's used to dealing with those federal and state entities beyond what we would be, I think that's probably the way to go. I think that would wind up going the way of the Highway Safety Committee. It's a great idea and people have good ideas, but it's awful hard to get people to participate after a while. Do you think there would be talent in this community? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I know of a number of people that have the resumes to be emergency management director that aren't police or fire. No, I don't mean director. To I'm, I'm just saying that's where the talent level is. Yeah. That's We have very talented people. I've had these discussions with that come to you and they We've had people that are emergency management directors in other communities they lived in. Yeah. So there is a talent level uh, with that. It's just trying to work within what we already have to work with, with the state entity and the federal entity, adding another way to it. I don't know if that would be helpful or more cumbersome. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure we willing to sit down and listen to what people have to say. So, Thank you. Yep. Mr. Uh, LeBranch. <clears throat> yes, Chief, you mentioned flooding. The recent flooding um, that we had within the last couple of weeks of King yep. Tide, I think it was. And did you activate and use that high water vehicle at all? We didn't have a need for it. Uh, we didn't have anybody calling to get removed from it. And uh, the way we worked that, we, we worked that somewhat jointly with the fire service. When we're going to have an event where we know it's going to be, we're going to be able to staff that. It seats three, so it's got a driver, a seat, a B seat, and a jump seat. And it's big enough that if we had to put, you know, fire personnel for uh, EMTs up in there with us, that's how we would get them down there so we're not running expensive pieces of fire apparatus through the breath, through that salt water. And that so. thing has, is, has all the equipment it needs in it, the radios and things like that? No, we didn't equip it with a radio. We felt in the area of operation we would use it. It's going to be in proxi proximity to the police station anyhow. You can use handheld. And believe it or not, our handheld radio system, mm -hmm. uh, we have a very robust uh, booster system here where okay. we don't have, like a lot of the communities in the, in the uh, seacoast have dead spots because they're trying to commu communicate with Brentwood. Right. We're right here and our communication center is right on the beach yep. and we built some, some real redundancy into the system that Good. even if one area fails, mm -hmm. another area is going to pick it up. Thank so you. And we just use the portables. One other thing, because um, I was watching on uh, television and WMUR, I think it was, was mm -hmm. down there, it was one of the stations, and I saw one of our cruisers driving down Ashworth Ave and probably a foot of water. Yeah. Do you have an SOP where when you do that, then that cruiser is required to take it uptown and wash it like within a day or two. We, our, our fleet maintenance people are on top of it and the, and the guys are very good. Once we get through any type of storm event or water event, first thing we do, we're right up here. We use a, we use a local car wash okay. and we usually run them through at least a couple times. Thank you very so much. So that's, that's a regular thing good. that we do because we, we have had those areas oh, where no. you, won't see, you won't see it on a line car. Okay, a line car is usually gone in a three-year period. So before that rust sets in, we've already gotten rid of it. Where you see it, the, where we've had frames rust and actually have to deadline the car, has always been detectives or administrative vehicles because we tend to keep those seven to ten years as opposed to the three. Right. So right. those are the cars that really suffer the damage from it. So yeah. we just, whenever we have those type of events, we get them right up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Any other comments or questions? Did we... Mr. Mara, I would just like to make a comment. 
in a positive way. And you were talking about the water and how you are going to get the word out. <clears throat> I can think of nothing better. They have to come in one way yep. from 1A than 103. If they don't see those signs, and then you have them down by the Ashworth and something else. I was actually thinking about the plane myself, but I was kind of laughing. I won't, won't throw that out. But yeah, summertime. I mean, how, many be a bad idea. how many places are they going to be? You, you can't miss it. You'd be amazed. Yeah. That the problem is, is when we have a weather event or the flooding, it is fascinating, you know, just having grown up around here, it is fascinating to watch. <clears throat> but also growing up here, I know that, you know, the last place I want to be standing is up on the seawall. <laughs> now, the last weather event, I, there was a picture in the Hampton Union. It's still posted. There's a guy yeah. holding his child as the water's splashing over. Now, all around him, you can see Rocks. debris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why would you hold your, your five-year-old up? And it just, it, it, it's always boggling to me that people with probably very intelligent people, yeah. but they see something that's magnificent to see and witness. Maybe we take it for granted. They come from all over when we have a big storm. When, when they hear the waves are crashing or we have a king tide, we have to chase people away mm -hmm. because it's, it's almost like a, an amusement ride to them. They, they just they see the waves crashing and it's, you don't get to see that every day or everywhere and they just come down and no matter how many signs we put up, how many, we mean constantly people going around the barricades when we set them up on High Street. Um, it's just a constant thing. I remember we had barricades set up right in front of the police station and the fire station one, one of these events. And somebody decided not to do it, and she went about halfway under right in front of the police station. Fortunately, the fire guys were in the house. They put on the wetsuits and went and got her right in front of the fire station. And there were signs everywhere. It was just people were going to do what they no matter how many precautions and how much word we put out, yeah. there's going to be a certain percentage of the population that's just going to defy it mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Do you arrest them for stupidity? No, no, we don't. Well, maybe we should, but we don't. It was a tragic accident on an ocean liner where some gentleman was holding a baby, his <laughs> grandchild. Yeah. A total tragic. Yeah. And just you like you're on the wall there, you can equally yeah. be flushed away with the ocean. Oh. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Marr. Anything, anybody else have any? Did we move this number? I, uh, we, we, yeah, I thought we did move the. the okay. I don't uh, think we did. The final number. No, the, no, the total emergency management. Oh, 12, yeah, go ahead. 12,464. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff for the emergency management. Uh, before we let Chief Slayer go, an excellent job, and Deputy Chief Hobbs, just to give the public an example. So if you added up the police budget and you added up the. Uh, parking lots and you added up emergency management ex excluding the uh, um, the 12,000 because that comes back as revenue and you look at the animal control we're talking a big responsibility in four million seven hundred thirty thousand I mean we're getting I, I think we're getting a great bargain when you look at all the things that they have to do in the police department I mean it's really amazing and the only other thing I want to add for the for the chief Sawyer is that you, know, you mentioned emergency management and I look at Chief Sawyer and Deputy Hobbs, Deputy Cutting, and Chief uh, Aon. They're so involved and respected at the state level. And you have to remember, he's right about the, uh, the mandate, the emergency management director, that position. You're actually in the command central with state and federal agencies. You technically fall under the command of the state. When, when anything exceeds our ability to handle right. at our level, yep. and the governor invokes his powers, we actually fall under the chain of, of state government. As you remember, we're all, every community is a subdivision of state government, so they can invoke that. So that's why they require the local entity to have a, an emergency management director to coordinate those efforts between the two. So. And you know, it's interesting, Bob, and in, in Richard remember the year, but when Chief Sullivan, Jamie Sullivan was chief, in conjunction with the governor, they closed down the beach. Yeah. It was their decision. Yeah. That's how critical <coughs> that emergency management director position is, but I agree what you're saying, and I think with what we saw in Channel 9 with Deputy Hale on, and you know that both chiefs are going to be very involved with Coastal, DES, and everybody in the town manager, so we've got a good team here, and I think the biggest thing is to keep these grants coming and the, the information flowing, and Stevens on the Hampton Seabrook Estuary, and I'll tell you, we got some great stuff happening, so I, I, I see some great results happening, but uh, thanks for bringing that up. Any further questions? Chiefs, th thank you so much for coming thank tonight, you. and uh, Deputy Hobbs, thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank I'm going to yes. be in Las Vegas, so how could I know how uh -huh. to <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.
We'd like to invite to the table now our Hampton Fire Chief, Jameson Ayotte, and Deputy Chief Justin Cutting. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you very much for allowing us in. Well, thank you. And thanks for your great presentation. I watched it on the, uh, not only your quarterly, but your 2020 budget. And I think, as I've said to everyone, I urge everyone to watch the meetings. Uh, it was well thought out, well presented. So we'll start off. Uh, Chief, unless you want to make any opening uh, statements on the budget, we'll do what we did with the police department. I, I would think that that would be appropriate. I do want to say that uh, Chief Sawyer and I, I would echo Chief Sawyer's sentiments on how the collaboration between oh, us and absolutely. the town manager, this is how this was derived. Absolutely, Chief. Thank you. So we're, we'll start off. Mr. Brado, if we could start under fire department administration under subtotal, would you move that number? Sure. That's 402. 818. Moved by Mr. Bridal. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Anyone have any questions or comments on the fire department administration? Pretty straightforward. It's literally a 1% increase, but it really is kind of almost <coughs> even, and I appreciate the chief uh, and deputy on that. Uh, anybody have any further comments in that area? No. Okay. We'll go to fire suppression. Yes, fire suppression is, okay, 2 million. Seven five one uh, seven five one two three three. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Mr. Mara, did you? Well, are you part of the meeting, David, or what? I'm just curious. So, fire suppression. Uh, Mr. Bridal was moved two million seven fifty one two three three, seconded by Mr. Pluff. You'll notice that the majority of the fire department budget obviously comes under that area because it's encompassed all the regular wages, all the vacations, sick leave, part-time wages, overtime wages, um, technical hazard, pro, uh, protective clothing, and that sort of thing. Anybody have any questions or comments in that area? <coughs> Mr. Henderson. Yeah, just a quick one. How are we doing with the uh, protective clothing? Have we gotten to the point where everybody's gotten a second set and is that program fulfilled? Absolutely, and thank you for asking. Um, we were very grateful to the, the citizens of Hampton for voting in the Warren article that allowed us to purchase a second set for all of the firefighters. Mm. Uh, we have now completed the purchase of all primary sets as well. So all of the firefighters that are currently working have two sets of gear, and that includes jackets, pants, boots, gloves, and a hood. Uh, we didn't buy new helmets for everybody. They're durable goods, so at this time, that's where we stand. So we feel uh, we're very grateful. Thank you Good. very much. Very excellent achievement on that, Chief. That was that's terrific. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Brian. Go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. Okay, on that line, um, I know that you talked about this the selectmen's meeting. But okay. The um, Warren article. There was some money left, correct? Correct. Okay. And where does where do you keep that? Where do you store that so you can use it in the future? So that's still under the the um, the Warren article was set it aside as a, as a separate account, uh, and that is retained there. And Chris, you might have a better. Yeah, it's a, a capital reserve fund, so it's held by the trustees. Okay. So they you. already have the two hundred thousand, and then when all the purchases are done, so then they'll reimburse the town. So they got the two hundred right out of the. Um, after the article passed. Right, and you spent about 139, 100. About 136,000 we figured, we yeah. calculated today. Yeah. So uh, there still is a small sum that remains in there. Uh, and then with the assistance of the town manager, it's proposed that we're gonna continue to add yearly so that when this gear reaches its maturity, then we'll be able to replace it as well. Excellent, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. That, was a, great that was a big, big move last year. Yes, you know, so very important. Anybody else uh, have any other comments or questions in this section? Okay, under fire prevention, accept the motion. Uh, subtotal for fire prevention is 106,508. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Anybody have any comments? Or? Great job in that area, too. All right, training. Training, moved 39,978. 
Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff, 39978 under training, medical services, pretty much nothing under new equipment, training and recruitment, pretty much uh, stayed the same. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? All right. Communications. Yes, sir. Communications is 268-134. Second. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Hearing no questions or comments. Yes, Repair sir. services. Repair services is 127150 Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Pretty much stayed the same on vehicle maintenance, uh, Chief. Yes, sir, and uh, you know, as, as we have talked about in the past, we're, we're seeing an aging fleet in the capital improvement plan. We're looking to replace in the years coming. Um, to that end, we're also doing maintenance. Uh, it's been identified on the ladder truck that there are some rust spots and we're dealing with that. Not a safety hazard, but we're, we're working towards mitigating that hazard, so we're staying right on top of it. Great, thank you. Anybody have any other questions or comments? Uh, lastly, under stations and buildings, Yes, sir. 107775. Second. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any discussion in that area? You want to move that uh, final number? The total fire department budget is 3,803596. Second. Second. And just remember that the as as Christy Poem has said, we'll wait to the final number. It is a little higher. Uh, but we can go into that more detail in the final number as we review December 17th. But uh, uh, excellent job. And I might add, if you've watched the meetings too, both uh, Chief Ayotte and Deputy Cutting have discussed, you know, these department heads have such more to, so much more than just the budget and managing, right? So you talked about vision and the west side and what it would <coughs> cost to do a substation on the west side, more man manpower excellent vision going forth. So we get a lot of things going on in this community and so you're always on the forefront of looking ahead and what's going to be needed because we continue to grow. So we appreciate uh, your budgets. Looks really good. Uh, thanks again this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Mr. Just, LeBrand. I just want to comment that uh, very good management. You know, you, when sir. we're looking at uh, a 1.0% increase over last year, Sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ladd. I would echo Stephen's comments. I would make one other question of you. Yes, sir. When the fire occurred down in Dover Avenue, yes, sir. could you explain the implications how your lack of enough staffing was impacted by that fire? So we were greatly assisted by off-duty vacationing firefighters. Um, it, it was characterized by some that they were off duty from our department and it wasn't so that you understand I've sat before you before to say that that was callback. These are off duty firefighters from other locations that happened to be across the street and they assisted our first arriving engine to deploy their supply line and to get operational. That was a large fire. It was on a wind driven day. Um, fire, the wind was driven at about nine miles an hour sustained gusts mm -hmm. up to almost 20 miles an hour. The potential for that entire area to become a conflagration was there. Without their assistance, it could have been very tragic. It was also um, a quick thinking and decision based, you know, uh, item there where a firefighter took initiative and, and took control. It's not something that we want to see. We certainly don't want anybody responding without the proper staffing. Um, this was a once in a lifetime event, we hope. And um, all things considered, did a tremendous job. And didn't you have multiple other events occurring simultaneously? Absolutely, we did. We had an ambulance call, which required three persons, so that was a potentially sick uh, patient, and usually there's two people that will transport out of the ho to the hospital. Uh, this particular person was very ill and took a driver plus two in the back. Um, additionally, we had a water call, so Marine One was outside of the harbor, right. and simultaneous to the phone calls coming in, uh, radio traffic from Marine One was coming in because the lieutenant that was on char in charge on the boat saw the smoke called back and he let them know that hey we have a fire and immediately a phone call came and said hey we have a fire um, so they were able to do that the boat the marine one had to come back to dock they had to secure the vessel and then get off get dressed get prepared and arrive at the scene they did so in in a timely fashion under two minutes which is really tremendous and it was it just shows the professionalism of the firefighters now, how many firefighters were on marine one at that time four so you had three in an ambulance four on a boat how many were left? 
uh, to respond. Well, uh, they, they, so that you understand too, the, the transport had <clears throat> completed. Um, the ambulance returned the, the third firefighter to get his gear and dropped him off at the beach fire station. They were returning to the the engine was at um, headquarters, so there was a captain and one firefighter plus the firefighter that was down at the at the beach fire station. So at the time, there was only one firefighter at the beach station took the spare engine. There were four firefighters on the boat, and then there was a captain and another firefighter up here at, at headquarters. It was a remarkable outcome considering the negative perfect storm. I absolutely agree. Thank you. Any comments? Any further comments? Thanks so much, Chief. Thank you so much. Cutting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Have, a Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And to you. Thank you very thank much. You Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Welch and Christy Paul, I just we just had a couple of questions. You can answer them from there if you want. Um, one of our members, uh, David Marr, had asked me, and I think others were probably for the viewers at home, just a kind of a quick exp a, a sentence or two on the default, the proposed budget, and the default budget number, and, and why the uh, the um, the difference in the uh, default budget. Well, if the barber can hear me. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. Good, yep. Good idea. So. So I did a little research, and as many of you who have been sitting here for multiple years know, whenever there have been years when we've had default budgets yep. that have passed by the voters, the town and the budget committee, management, department heads have always worked to realize that in order for a budget to pass, it, must, it needs to come in below the default. So for that to happen, things have to be cut. So some of the cuts that you will find, um, just so you can see, I'll just scan through this real quickly, but there's yellow on almost every one of these pages. Right. And those are all areas that have been cut. The majority of those lines, if you look closely at them, and you can all see this by going through your, mm -hmm. this is just your summary sheet, it's nothing, mm -hmm. That's not right. a special yep. document that right. I have. Yep, it's right um, in the book. But you can see that it's supplies and expense lines, repairs and maintenance, vehicle maintenance, overtime wages, all of those things were cut so that we could come before the voters with a budget that we can work within, right. but that we've listened to them, we've heard. This is what they want at this time. And our goal is to bring to you guys, for you to bring forward to however you choose, right. to the voters, a budget that we think can get passed. And that's always our goal when we start out, is to bring forward a budget that we hope will get passed. And by looking at the history, of default budgets and when they pass again it's always a budget except for one situation it's always been a budget that's lower than the default budget so good explanation mr mar did, you, did that answer your question or did you? well <clears throat> it made me wonder because we still have a certain amount of expenses <clears throat> and one of the thinking and not knowing where it's going is the fact that <clears throat> all those prior years they asked for a certain amount of money in the default budget <clears throat> was less than, and the voters approved it. it. My concern was, you've taken things away, which sounds very positive, and I've looked at them and I saw where they went down and all that sort of stuff. But can they be held down? That's my question. And if they can be, why didn't we take an approach like this years prior? I think in the end we probably have taken an approach like this years prior because yeah. On this sheet, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but I went back to 2003, and there's been more default budgets than there have been budgets that have passed yeah, sure. over that time. Yeah. So the lower number is most of the time the number that does pass with the voters. Right. So therefore, in some of those years, you may have more Warren articles. So maybe some of those items that were under the vehicle maintenance, you'll see in a Warren article and then it's giving the voters a chance to vote more specifically on what they want. So I feel that in years, in situations like that, if there's things that, pe if there's things that departments do need and they feel strongly that they need it and they have the support of management and then the Board of Selectmen has to go through a lot of layers and then it comes to the Budget Committee and everyone gets to say whether they recommend or not recommend it. And those might be some of the years when you saw maybe one of those years when there was, what, 75 Warren articles, Brian? I mean, uh, you, pretty much. there's been a lot, and then some years there's only like 20. So you kind of have to go for a feel of what the voters yeah. are looking for and bring forward to them 
things that we hope that can get passed or prioritize you know um, sometimes the budget committee doesn't agree with some of the things that we've brought for that the management has brought forward and so then the votes change and people decide whether they that's important to them whether it's the new plow truck or the new mm -hmm. garbage truck or whatever is in a Warren article well so, I looked at it and I saw a lot of things that were cut particularly by Fred's area and yes. I thought he did in my opinion outstanding job getting done what he had done I just wanted everybody to hear yep. what it was and how it came to be correct but and I think he did a great job period yes and in the, it is in one of your appendix I don't know if it's a or B but one of the appendix does have a summary of exactly what a, you're talking about Dave. Yep. so if people wanted to look at that they can see the actual breakdown of what the manager did and then what the Board of Selectmen yes. did in turn thank you you all said yeah Mr. I, was, Brent. I was just going to add to that that um, thank you both for doing excellent work always um, bringing in a budget like this is shows that you're you listen and um, and I think it's excellent so thank you both yeah absolutely uh, very impressive and you know it, it's it is it, and as I sit here I think of all the other stuff that the selectmen and the management have to do with the Warren articles and all the other stuff we need in this town so it's not easy and uh, it, on the face of it right now, just hearing the first two department heads tonight with your input, I, I think we're off to a great start. I really do. I, I, I a lot, and congratulations, Mr. Welch, as, as always, in, in putting this, and in, in Christy, I don't know what we do without you. So thank you. I, I think that's it for tonight. We have a few things left here to do. But, uh, so we'll see you in December. We'll, yes. We will see you actually December 10th, Happy yes. three Thanksgiving weeks from tonight. Okay. Thank you. Have a good with Thanksgiving public works. Well. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. So, Thank you. Okay. so uh, <laughs> yes. Have a good turkey day. You too. <laughs> Show the turkey water. Right. <laughs> a couple of quick updates as I mentioned. We're going to hold the minutes to uh, October 15th to our uh, next meeting. Uh, we may do them. We may do them the, the uh, December 3rd meeting. I'll get into that in a second. But Barbara is out for today. Quick update on the master plan committee, which is phenomenal. Um, I've really enjoyed being a part of it. We have our sixth meeting tomorrow evening. Um, you, many of you who have followed it at the Slackman annual <coughs> planning board level in, in, in the newspapers around town, we've asked all residents in, to take the survey, which is right on the first page of our website. Scroll down to the bottom, it talks master plan, take the survey now. What does that do? It's anonymous. It gives us input on what the public feels they like the town to become what it is now, what areas of interest. Some people may have recreational needs, other, other needs. You know, do we want more condominiums? Do we want the beach area growing? Do we want the west side growing? Just those type of questions. Tomorrow evening, we're going to get an update on the amount of surveys. Ann Carnaby has been very involved with that. Uh, and remember, this is survey number one. So as we get closer, we're going to start getting even more input. And we already have been received, will we receive through the planning office monies for, from the DES Coastal Pro Program, like 45000 to help us. So that's going to, that's there no matter what happens to help us guide us through, you know, last year we had a lot of discussion around the master plan and we haven't come up with a number yet at the budget, at the uh, Warren article level, but we're going to start talking about that tomorrow night with Jason Bashan and the planning board. I really feel comfortable this is we're at a critical point now I really think we need to be looking at years to come and, and this town is at a big juncture so it's been kind of a great committee uh, go ahead Mr. LeBrand when you said we are we having a meeting tomorrow night uh, no this is the plan the master plan oh, okay committee. <laughs> I just wondered if I missed plan. something somewhere okay, okay thank you yeah. just clarify yeah. the uh, master go ahead could you repeat where to find that survey? So, so if you go on a Town of Hampton website and it brings you up, the first thing you see is the Hampton Beach and you see government. I'll scroll right down to the bottom where it gives you all this great information. It's on the first page down the bottom left says master plan. Right. And you'll take the survey. It's, it's, it's an anonymous. It literally takes five minutes. You can do it on less. your yeah. less. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on wherever. But I encourage everybody. Oh, uh, I can tell you that um, a lot of the groups in town, Mr. Brown can attest, a lot of the organizations have been spoken to already church organizations rotary groups chamber of commerce businesses in town when i'm out and about i talk to everybody about it i'll tell you a lot of people have taken it and, oh. and beach businesses so and residents and visitors so uh people own property and all kinds of good stuff 
So more information on that to come. Barbara had a report, um, but basically we'll give more. We're getting really psyched up for the Warren article. Uh, Mr. Barrow, anything to add for Selectman's report? No, I think you've pretty much covered everything. Thanks. Uh, school board report, um, actually I'll combine that with um, Mrs. Barrow Russell could be here tonight. So our next meeting of the budget committee is two weeks from tonight. Strictly school board, SA, uh, strictly SAU 90 in this room. Uh, we have the whole third. night uh, committed for that budget. Um, just so that you know, I'll be meeting with Kathleen Murphy and Myra Curtis next Tuesday morning to get kind of preliminary, you know, my, uh, did I pronounce her name right, Myra? Not Myra, is it Myra? Mariah. 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 Mariah, sorry Mariah. So um, she took over for Nate Lunny. Very nice, she's been working for years. And just to kind of give us an indication, I should have an indication either that day or the day before, which is uh, next week, on when their budget books should be available. And for those of you who have been around for a while know that they're very good at getting the books and they will be available to you at the SAU 90 office, which is still on Scott Road next to Hannaford. And I will email you, as I have, to say they're ready, go pick them up. Um, and so we'll meet December 3rd. I also sent you a schedule of meetings um, for pretty much laid out. Um, December 10th, of course, is all public works. Uh, December 12th is all the other agencies. There's a whole slew of them that you saw, and most of them are pretty, uh, Boilerplate. I mean, we deal with these, the health agencies and all kinds of things, town clerk, tax collector, yeah. building department. And then the 17th is very critical, December 17th. That's our final review where we're going to plug in a final number strictly for budget. Right. And then we get into Warren articles that January 14th, right. uh, which is, that's a very critical night because that's when we will be discussing Warren articles and the whole night will be dedicated to that. Um, Hampton Village District Report. Mr. Ladd, anything you want? I have nothing to add at this time. Thank you. Um, and like I said, upcoming meeting. Stephen, did you want to add this little bit? I want to tell you about this. Uh, I have to tell you now. The, we had our chat meeting this afternoon, and nice. It, you know, it's so exciting. Um, it was announced that the town of Hampton got a grant, uh, yeah, some money, 185000 dollars. And everything that we're doing is now, we've been meeting for months and months. Um, it's all coming together. And we talked this afternoon about how we're now going to start presenting all this information. Nice. Um, now, one of the things that, that you know, the uh, winners, they, had, they showed the winners of the uh, that flooding event. And they made oh, a I see the pictures. Out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so chat is going to make a, um, a show that can be presented and and then we talk about how we're going to get this you know how can we share this information one of the th my thoughts was um, use it as a filler on channel 22 in between meetings you know how they need filler yes material yeah, sure. on channel 13 as well and then I thought as a suggestion as well is to um, talk consider a, a some type of a public meeting maybe the potential is at the new uh, auditorium yes. at the school and on the stage I don't know if they have a big pull down screen or if they just have a huge television display or whatever got but we could fill that room with hundreds of people and and take make a good presentation of the <coughs> cut it down to about an hour because our meetings take two hours and we've been meeting for months on end but cut it down um, we, we have just we have a, a ton of information, and that we was given out this afternoon, Bob. Um, some of the software is unbelievable. It's, unbelievable. it's They've interactive, got a, and you can you yep. can look at the beach, and then you can check different scenarios, and you can check, for instance, um, what the projections are for sea level rise, but also what about a storm, a storm surge, and a percentage, and every time you check a box it changes the flood map and it is we were fooling around with this afternoon we were here in this room and it's it's something that people are really going to like when you know when we finally make this stuff available to them um, I, I mentioned that it's important that we start educating make presentations at the at the academy to the kids themselves and make it available to Winnicott high school students 
So these kids can start thinking about what's coming up because this stuff is, it's, it's, it's serious. Um, it has to be, it's being discussed almost on a daily basis so when you see the news everywhere. Look at Venice, yeah. Venice, Italy, you know, with yeah. the water. It's, it's something that um, the government is getting more involved in. The slideshow in our presentation is going to be sent up as well to the uh, representatives that represent us in Congress. Um, Chris Pappas is on a, um, a, one of the committees that he's on is, has to do with yep. infrastructure and, and water and stuff. And so we want him to look at those pictures that were taken from that contest mm -hmm. and say, this is my district, folks, and this is what's happening. That's how you know, it starts. I mean, so well, yeah, so we're we're really we've we've done uh, so much, but today was a big step with the announcement of that money, you know, so that we can terrific take another. They're all like little baby steps, but it's moving forward. It's moving it yeah. forward. It's really important stuff. We have a great time at those meetings. I've if you could say. send me, or if you have copy, or by email. The reason I say that, I happen to know a certain science teacher at the academy. I'd love to have you on okay. the speak. But also, when I'm, when I'm uh, see, seeing the um, uh, superintendent, uh, they are very gracious about when they open up that auditorium. And if you have dates, I'm telling you, if you haven't been to that auditorium, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Well, we're putting something together where we're going to have speakers. Yeah. And one of the suggestions that I made this afternoon, they, they're going to bring in speakers from different state departments yep. and things and from the Rockingham planning and from the, uh, some of the other agencies. But I suggested, hey, you know, we're looking at the impact of the flooding down at the beach. Right. Bring in Dean Morrow. Let's get the perspective of an insurance sure, agent, sure. okay, yeah. that says these are the problems that we're facing. Let's bring in the uh, Kim from across the street at People's Bank, the manager, and get the perspective of if I want to get a mortgage down at the beach, what do I, what hoops do I have to jump through? Sure. Can I get insurance? And on these, one of the things that was discussed was, uh, this isn't going to fly, a de the developers have to sign a waiver that there, these new things that they're building on, on roads that flood, uh, they, they're not going to have emergency access. And they've got to put that in their docks so that when somebody buys a house, they, uh, that's pretty drastic. But I can't imagine being able to go to a bank or get and fire get insurance yeah. Yeah. when you run a street, you're building, the builder is building something new that is going to flood and, and they can't get to it, the, the emergency apparatus when there's, and they're going to make every effort, I know they will, but these are the kind of things that we're talking about. And it's really good stuff, I've got to say. Well, I think it's great. And I mentioned this to Mr. Ladd, and I've been very impressed with, you know, the precinct, uh, the village district has had for many years what I choose to call guest speakers. And you yeah. and I talked about It's been excellent because you've had people come in, not only whether it's related to schools or town, but on issues as critical as what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And this, this discussion is so, I mean, you look at all you folks that are involved with this, this is going to be something that's going to have to continue to be the discussion among many groups, you know, and selectmen and chamber and businesses and the village district and on and on. And it's, I, it's state government and federal. State government, government and federal is huge. And you know, the dredging, look at all the great work you guys did, and now we're getting the harbor dredge. So mm -hmm. it takes you know, takes that initiative, but great, great work, Steve. So be in touch. Uh, I, I think it's I, fascinating. I'll send, you that. I'll send you the links because please do. Um, there's, there's one, there's one program that is just fascinating. Yeah. To, to, yeah. You know, to be able and you can see the whole beach, and you check different scenarios, and it changes, and it projects out what, what will end up flooding. You know, and unfortunately, the um, twenty twenty one hundred. That's the, uh, what, year, what year is it now? 2019. 2019. 2019, okay. So 2100, this thing projects out. Guess what? <laughs> I don't even, it would scare you. It would scare you. Because of, of oh, I projections. Know. Projections are things that they, they're doing. Thank you. So, yeah. You're Good. welcome. So a reminder, December 3rd in this room at 7 p.m. Anybody have anything else? Motion to adjourn. Happy Thanksgiving. By Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Brito at 810. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you at home.